Hey, what's up, everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with Loot Masters, and it's time for another Ableton Live production basics tutorial. This is less of a tutorial and more of a top five list of the new features that I am most excited about. Ableton Live 10.1 just dropped earlier today. I've known about these features and that they were coming for a while, but having hands on only for a day, I already know I am so excited for them. So let's just run through what they are. I'm gonna leave a link to the full change log in the video description if you wanna check everything out. I highly suggest you do. There are a number of shortcuts and workflow improvements that are just gonna make your life easier and get you producing quicker, faster, and more efficiently. And you know, those shortcuts are very important. That being said, let's jump into my top five. First up, number one, sidechain freezing. So for the longest time, since version four, I've been using Ableton Live, and forever, I haven't been able to freeze a track with sidechain compression on it. I've got this serum base patch here. It's really thick, and I wanna duck it out of the way of the kick to let that kick breathe and stand out in the mix. Boom, I got it hooked up inside of the sidechain here. And until this version, if I right-clicked the channel and went to freeze track, it'd give me an error saying you can't freeze sidechain tracks, but now, but douche frozen with sidechain still enabled. And if I solo this track, you can see it getting ducked there as well. So the compression is still happening. The effect is still live, but the track is frozen. And now if I wanted to bounce that to audio, I could just right click and flatten. That's been the standard forever, but being able to freeze this track and free up that CPU with still having the sidechain compression or any other effect with sidechain functionality is Absolutely awesome. Next up, we now have a number of preset automation shapes. So if I come in here to my envelope, click uh, clip volume, and I'm just doing this for demo purposes. If I highlight this area, right click, I've got a number of preset shapes. So if I put in my sine wave right here, I now have volume automation right there. Not only that, but I can manipulate it in a number of ways. You'll see as I'm hovering over the selection, there are these little square boxes. If I hover over that, I can make it you know, more compressed to happen over quicker time. Uh, if I come here to the middle one, I can shrink it down this way. If I come over here, I can make it kind of, uh, you know, give it a little bit of a different shape. You know, we have a lot of great controls right there, and that is absolutely phenomenal. Again, a big workflow, especially if you're making like a riser or if you want your filter to have kind of an LFO shape, boom, right there for you. That brings me to number three, which kind of segues into this. If I right click any one of these filter nodes, let me go ahead and get out of the selection so I'm not gonna edit them all. But if I right click here, I can go to edit value and manually type in a value now. That's insane to me, especially for projects that have different BPMs. If I hit tab here and I open up my master, uh, you know, it used to be I'd have to come in here to mixer and if, like, if I wanted to change the song tempo, I'd have to come in here and I'd have to use, you know, I'd have to do shift, drag up and down to get my kind of, you know, micro values. But even then, if I want to get super exact, I'd have to totally expand this and then pull it in, you know. But now I can just right click, edit value, say 100 BPM, boom, right here. Let's say I want it to be 85 BPM. Oh my gosh, phenomenal. And obviously every automation line does have that edit value property and I'm gonna be using it in all sorts of different ways. But the immediate use case for me is having those BPM changes be exact and being able to do it. <laughs> we're just editing the value instead of having to go in and do that whole other tedious process. Absolutely phenomenal. So next up, the wavetable synth inside of Ableton Live, if you have it or if you have the suite, you can now drag and drop any wavetables into here. So maybe if you want your serum wavetables inside of the wavetable synth inside of Ableton Live, that's doable. But not only that, you can drag and drop any audio files in there as well. So now I'm using this audio file to create these sounds. Very, very, very cool. And last but not least, the final thing that I'm very excited for is VST3 support. For the longest time, I haven't even been installing my VST3s because I only use Ableton Live and they would just be taking up space on my computer. But there are a number of really, really great functions that come with VST3 
that aren't available in VST2. And again, I'll leave a link to a really great article about what those benefits are and some of the myths around VST3. But some plugins don't even come VST2. Like for example, Autotune, you need VST3 support in your DAW to use it, unless you're on a Mac with Ableton Live and have AU support. But for me, a PC user with Ableton Live, never was able to use Autotune, but now I can easily enough because VST3 support. Many, many, many great changes. Those are just my top five that I'm most excited about. Uh, let me know if there's anything you want to know more about in terms of the update or just Ableton Live in general. I'm Joshua Casper here for Loopmasters. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.